The History of Social Justice in India by the All India Social Justice Federation Diversity of every shade, linguistic, cultural, ethnic, political and social exists in India and that is why we say diversity, thy name is India. Today's India is a cluster of 28 states and 8 union territories and it comprises several hundred languages and innumerable cultures. From the Indus Valley civilization to the recently discovered Kiradi in Tamil Nadu that showcases rich cultural Tamil heritage, our nation has umpteen hidden treasures that evidence our cultural, linguistic, geographical and historical diversity. However, over time, social evils had developed within our nation. One particular evil was the menace of the caste system that created fissures in an otherwise peaceful society. An artificial upper caste, lower caste social narrative was introduced and the people were divided solely on the basis of birth into a community. This directly and adversely affected disadvantaged groups like backward classes, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes who did not have access to even basic educational and economic opportunities. Over time, Mammoth protests and social revolutions erupted for the social and economic liberation of the backward classes, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Almost every state in India had its own leader and son of the soil fighting for social justice at different points in time. It was Saint Guru Nanak in the 14th and 15th centuries, Saint Ravidas who reigns the hearts of people in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Odisha, Punjab and Haryana, Jyoti Rao Phule, who in 1873 founded the Satya Shodak Samaj, the Society of Truth Seekers at Pune in Maharashtra, philosopher and visionary Sri Narayana Guru founded a separate social forum to fight for social justice and to eradicate caste oppression in Kerala in the 18th and 19th centuries. Dr. Gaud Lachana born in Srikakulam in Andhra Pradesh and his contemporary social justice warrior Lakshman Bapuji of Telangana. Around the same time, Raj Biharilal Mandal battled for the progress of the backward communities in Bihar, Bengal and Odisha. Freedom fighter and legendary social reformist Babuji Jagjeevan Ram of Bihar made unparalleled contribution in the fight for the rights and equality of the scheduled caste community. He faced untold caste discrimination at a young age and rose to serve for 50 years as an MP and Deputy Prime Minister of India. He formed the All India Depressed Classes League in 1935. The legendary chairman of the Mandal Commission, formed by the Moraji Desai government, BP Mandal, who was responsible for the allocation of 27% reservations for OBC by the subsequent VP Singh government. In fact, Bihar has an endless list of leaders who have been fighting for the welfare and social liberation of the backward classes. They include Babu Jayadev Prasad, who was Deputy Chief Minister of the state, Karpuri Thakur, who was Chief Minister multiple times, and Bola Paswan, who became the state's first Chief Minister from the SC community in 1968-1970. to Following in the path of these historic leaders of social justice is Lalu Prasad Yadav, who was a constant voice for social justice in political and social forums even today. He never fails to lend his voice for the cause of social justice. In the national capital, Delhi, we had Chaudhary Bram Prakash Yadav and in Uttar Pradesh, Ram Swaroop Verma. Stalwart leaders like Mulayam Singh Yadav and Kanchi Ram fought for the cause of social justice in the political arena. India's tryst with social justice history can never be written without a mention of its greatest champion, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Himself a victim of caste atrocities and untouchability, he devoted his entire life to liberate the oppressed communities. He believed that the best weapon to fight caste hegemony is education and knowledge and therefore spread awareness through his writings and teachings. As the head of the Constituent Assembly, he drafted for the nation a constitution that contains social justice in its preamble and basic structure. History remembers 
and celebrates Baba Sahib Dr. Ambedkar as an icon of the social justice movement. There are countless other leaders who had fought for equality, social justice and upliftment of the socially oppressed sections of societies across India. Yet, when you talk of struggle for social justice, Tamil Nadu is a monument and the state has a prodigious social justice history behind it. Social justice and equality are the backbone of Tamil Nadu's political and social identity. This identity is not a product of a year or even a decade. The historic evils that ostracized backward communities and caused untold misery and agony for over 2000 years were liberated by the Dravidian movement and its torchbearer the Dravida Munetra Karagam. The party through its administration laid a foundation for the liberation of the oppressed sections and offered the state inclusive development. The seed for social justice revolution in Tamil Nadu was sown by the Justice Party. C. Natesan, Sir Pitti Tyagarayar and T. M. Nair came together to launch the Justice Party in 1917. Its mission was to carve opportunities for backward classes in education and employment. It won the popular mandate and formed a government that lasted for nearly 13 years. The policy decisions of the Justice Party chief ministers and the manner in which they governed the state turned the political history of India on its head. In 1921, it was the Justice Party government that unveiled a communal reservation law for the first time in India. This threw open the doors of public employment and education for countless persons from backward classes for the first time. Till then, these institutions were closed societies, meant only for the upper castes. It was only one among several historic and revolutionary socially conscious policies that the Justice Party government had introduced. Elementary education law, compulsory education for girls and boys, special committees to offer equal opportunities for boys and girls to enroll in colleges, teacher training institutes for women, free education for girls up to SSLC level are some of the visionary policies of the Justice Party government. In fact, for the first time in India, the Justice Party government offered voting rights to women. In 1920, the Justice Party government became the first in India to implement a free noon meal scheme for all schools under the Chennai Corporation. It offered scholarships to backward classes students to remove their economic disadvantage and offer level playing ground to students from all social backgrounds. The Justice Party government abolished the scourge of the Devadasi system. It created a public service commission to recruit government servants and this was yet another first in India. Therefore, the history and feats of the 13-year Justice Party regime are still being spoken about in India. It was in 1944 that the Justice Party metamorphosed into the Dravidar Karagam under the leadership of Tandai Periyar. Even though Tandai Periyar did not take a political plunge, his scintillating speeches and unmatched ideological vision had a deep impact on the economic and social development of the state, social justice, caste annihilation, liberation and progress of women and equality for all. Tandai Periyar's disciples like Perarinyar Anna and others founded the Dravida Munetra Karagam. The voice of Perarinyar Anna roared in parliament for states' rights and autonomy. After forming the government in the state in 1967, the DMK government led by Anna renamed Madras state as Tamil Nadu. He introduced the two-language formula. The DMK government brought in a legislation permitting self-respect marriages. A couple in love can get married as per their volition without rituals, thereby making it easy to have intercaste marriages. After Anna, a beloved Muttamar Aringer Kalangir M. Karnanadi took the reins of the movement and became Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu in 1969. By enacting countless laws to promote social justice and equality in Tamil Nadu, Kalangir proved his mettle and showed the world that he was a worthy student of Periyar and brother of Aringer Anna. Kalangir Karnanadi formed the Satanadan Committee and based on its recommendation, granted 31% reservation for OBCs and 18% for scheduled castes. In 1989, Kalangir created 20% reservations for most backward classes comprising of at least 108 intermediary castes. 
This accelerated the progress of the most backward classes, who started getting employment and jobs more easily than ever. In 1979, the Mandal Commission was constituted by the Union government to identify and inquire into the social status of other backward classes and recommend measures to improve their living conditions. In its report in the 1980s, the Mandal Commission recommended grant of 27% reservation for OBCs in education and employment. The report, however, was consigned to cold storage as there was opposition to the recommendations in North India. It took another 10 years for the report to be revived and implemented by the VP Singh government in 1990. Because of the government order, the VP Singh government at the centre was toppled. However, Kalingir Karunanadi as the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu accepted the Mandal Commission report and enforced it in the state of Tamil Nadu. In a speech at the state assembly, Kalingir Karunanadi heaped praise on the VP Singh government on August 21, 1990. He said that the Mandal Commission report had given us a foundation to implement social justice measures, championed implementation of the report and even to go beyond the recommendations and do more for OBCs. He moved a resolution to support the Mandal Commission report in the Tamil Nadu Assembly and it was unanimously adopted. It is because of these efforts of Kalingar Karunanadi that Tamil Nadu now has 69% reservations for the backward classes, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. It was Kalingar's government in 1989 that passed a pioneering law to give women equal share in the family property. This law is still considered a model law for the whole nation only in 2005, the then Union government made it law for the whole country. Kalinga Karunanadi championed education for women and he made college education for women completely free of cost. This too helped Tamil Nadu emerge as a state where the flag of social justice flies high. Kalinga's revolution was not just in the public sector. It was during the DMK's rule that even the private sector experienced a revolution. By framing special laws for SIPCOT, Sitco and establishing information technology parks across Tamil Nadu, Kalingir Karunanadi modernized Tamil Nadu and brought lakhs of information technology jobs to Tamil Nadu. The beneficiaries of these jobs were the youth of Tamil Nadu and it is for this reason that history fondly remembers Kalingir Karunanadi as the architect of modern Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu has witnessed a new dawn under Chief Minister Muthuvel Karunanadi Stalin. The schemes and policies he has implemented immediately after taking charge as Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu has brought about an unbelievable change on economic and social justice fronts. CM MK Stalin has brought to fruition Tandai Periyar's long-held dream and Kalingar Karunanadi's persistent battle by enacting a law permitting archakars from all castes in temples. Social Justice Pledge on Tandai Periyar's birth anniversary Equality Day Pledge on Dr. Ambedkar's birth anniversary, Memorial for Martyrs of Reservation Struggle in Virupuram, Resumption of Periyar Samatvapuram Project are just few of the social justice policies of CM Stalin. The other projects to promote inclusive development include Pudumai Pen Project to enable women to realize their dreams, Makkal Thedi Maruthuvam, Illam Thedi Kalvi, Naan Mudalvan, the Mudalvarin Mugavari Scheme to elevate the hurdles faced by the people, and free breakfast scheme for school students. These are some of the revolutionary policy measures taken by Chief Minister M.K. Stalin within a period of two years. The 7.5% reservation in medical courses for students from government schools became law because of Stalin, who as the then leader of opposition stood by the government in enacting the law. He even met the Tamil Nadu governor and launched a protest against the governor when the Raj Bhavan sought to put the law in cold storage. After assuming charge as Chief Minister, M.K. Stalin handpicked top lawyers to defend the law before the Madras High Court. The 7.5 reservation granted to government school students was then expanded to cover all professional degrees. M.K. Stalin, as Chief Minister of the Dravida Model Government, has taken forward the cause of women empowerment and economic independence in society by providing free bus passes to all women and providing monthly basic income of rupees 1000 to female heads of families. This has caused women to unshackle themselves from centuries of patriarchal oppression and stand tall. The DMK's members of parliament, T.R. Balu and P. Wilson, 
spoke in the parliament demanding 27% reservation for OBCs in the All India quota of MBBS. DMK's Rajya Sabha MP P. Wilson then wrote to the Union Health Minister multiple times and also met the minister in person regularly to press for the demand. CM MK Stalin then wrote to the Prime Minister Narendra Modi, reiterating the demand. He also wrote to all national level political leaders, requesting them to lend their voice and collectively to support the DMK's demand for 27% reservations for OBCs in All India Quota in medical admissions. Not confining to political measures, Chief Minister Stalin then directed the party's senior lawyer, P. Wilson, to take forward the legal battle up to the Supreme Court of India. These efforts bore fruits. The party was able to win the case and get 27% reservations in All India Quota of medical and dental courses. This win has benefited 4,022 OBC students in medical courses and 1,000 OBC students in dental courses every year. This achievement was made possible by Chief Minister M.K. Stalin. A medical college can admit only 150 students. For accommodating 4,022 students, as many as 27 new medical colleges have to be built. Therefore, this boon for OBC students became possible only as a result of the political and legal struggle spearheaded by Chief Minister M.K. Stalin, who realized that this is a struggle undertaken not only for Tamil Nadu, but for the whole of India. Every OBC leader and organization across India celebrated and hailed these efforts of Chief Minister M.K. Stalin, which was a massive win on the social justice front. Commenting on the victory, Chief Minister Stalin brimmed with pride and said, This is a historic day. This day deserves to be cast in gold. This has come as music to the years, 73 years after the social justice movement first made its appearance on the horizon. Chief Minister Stalin is not one to rest on his laurels. Immediately after the historic win, he called for the formation of the All India Federation for Social Justice and invited all like-minded leaders from states to come together. A webinar was conducted last year. Every top voice for social justice in India participated in the webinar and commended the Chief Minister on his historic feat. But Chief Minister Stalin's vision for social justice does not stop with Tamil Nadu. He wants to continue the battle ceaselessly for states' rights and achieve the ultimate goal of social justice across India with everyone's participation and involvement. Everything for everyone. This is Chief Minister Stalin's Dravidian model. It is now his dream to reach this vision to the nook and corner of India.